I heard about the 24 countries and the 30,000 kilometers. Wow! <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll bring my triple seven to kind of, you know, make you go faster. You can spare an engine. <laughs> <laughs> You're already flying high. Most men are walking. Ah, you've got my lips sealed <laughs> <laughs> Girls or boys need not dream of flying. They must dream of breaking all their shackles. I want to use the soil not only as an ecological process, mm -hmm. also as a, a conscious process of unifying humanity. Only if all of us act, this is going to happen. Happiness or peace? If you've given up on joy, you can come down to peace or you can rest in peace. about the 24 countries and the 30,000 kilometers, how does that feel? <laughs> My God, I don't think I can do it. From 1st of March. Wow! <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> Brilliant! So, are you excited? Uh, we'll make it happen. Yes, maybe I'll bring my triple seven to kind of, you know, make you go faster. Let's see. If you can spare an engine <laughs> 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 the dynamics are going to change <laughs> supremely. <laughs> but then again, I can't miss, I can't miss with the divine intervention. The divine <laughs> intervention is always there, but so humbled and so, so, so privileged to meet you, Sadhguruji. In fact, I wanted to introduce you uh, to our, uh, uh, my part of uh, the story where I give dreams to so many women, girls out there. Um, I'm a part of a Generation Equality Forum with uh, the United Nations Women mm -hmm. and um, I represent India globally as a spokesperson for them. So I'm, I'm really honoured to meet you and discuss uh, the points of, you know, how we can promote uh, gender equality uh, through the Generation Equality Forum. Hey, you're already flying high, what is equal? And most, most men are walking. <laughs> 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 now you, uh, you've got my lips sealed. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> See, I'm crawling on a motorcycle, you're boom. Uh, it's the blessings, sir. It's the blessings no, that definitely. make us fly. We are nobody. I feel through my life's path, I was once an eight-year-old girl who had a... Oh, you were born at eight, is it? Huh? I'm still eight. And I'll forever be eight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who had a head full of dreams, who wanted to touch the stars. Didn't know how to, I was the only child, but I wanted to. That's all that I wanted to do. And I thought maybe if I fly the airplanes, I can make that happen. And I went against my parents, my society, the family. All the landlubbers. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to fly so badly, uh -huh. and so I built my own hang glider from parachute silk of those days. Wow! And I took off and I flew for about twenty-two seconds. And then I broke both my ankles. <laughs> and later on, after a few years, I trained properly, bought a hang glider and I did fly. I still have that hang glider in a bad condition though. <laughs> Need to fix it sometime when I have the time <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can... I can do something about it, maybe I can help you in whatever little I can way to fix it. But it's interesting, so you also have those, but you're flying with your thoughts, you fly, you're making all of us fly <laughs> with all your words, the amazing words that are spoken. <laughs> so it's, it was amazing, I went against all the land lovers, as you said, and um, things kept on happening to me in my life, weird things, uh, strange things, which I never understood why me. And last year I did a flight which broke a few world records and it also changed my path in my life completely. And I was at a place now, I can give dreams to the millions of girls out there. And I'm standing What do we do with platform. that many pilots? <laughs> <laughs> so that comes to my next agenda, I want to change the world, which is where that idea came from. How should I change the world? Well, See, it's not necessary. Everybody has to do the same thing that somebody else has done. See, we want to fly right from ancient times. Uh, by looking at the birds, people who had this, you know, from Icarus to me <laughs> and to you now. 
uh, flight has always excited people mm -hmm. because it represented freedom. So essentially what people are looking for is to be free, not to fly, really. Only when I went into deep states of meditativeness within myself, this wanting to fly, wanting to fly came down in me. I clearly saw that the important thing was to be free. Somehow, walking on the f ground, too much friction, that itself is holding you down, speed is holding you down, so flight looked like freedom. Well, I still hold a license for a road tripping <laughs> That is... Uh, I thought that would be very useful for me for the work that I do. <coughs> so, people or girls or boys need not dream of flying. They must dream of breaking all their shackles. A few shackles, I know girls won't like this, but I'm saying a few shackles society has imposed on people, whether male or female, they have their shackles. Absolutely, absolutely. But most of the other shackles are self-imposed. If you take that away, you will see social restrictions are not really a problem. We can manage those things, change those things, we can transform those things. Different times, depending on which time of history we exist, there are different situations. You can either see it as a shackle or just a situation that you can use to do what you want. As I repeatedly say, what life throws at you is not always your choice. What you make out of it is hundred percent your choice. If I throw you out of the window, it's your choice to crash or to fly off. <laughs> Isn't it? You know what I'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> ah, without those big engines, let me see <laughs> The GE 90s, yes <laughs> So that's, that's really true because uh, I've always felt that um, I think whatever I have, I'm in a male dominated world technically where are they dominating? It's only been talked about, where is the dominance? <laughs> <laughs> no, in the pilots, amongst the pilots, I was amongst a handful of girl pilots when I did join Air India. You, you were not dominated, you got all the attention. <laughs> so I was like People this. think, uh, if I say this, they will think it's sexist. I'm not saying in that context, because you are different, naturally people would have paid attention, but I don't think it's always dominance, is it, really? It's a uh, supposed a dominance, so you can take it in your stride or you can take it against you. I chose to take it in my stride and I, ta I chose, like you said, I chose to make the most out of the situation. Because not only I was leading a path for being a young girl, I was also leading a path for a lot of young girls who were going to follow my footpath. So... Uh, you're leaving footprints when you're flying, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm The doing... idea of flying is not to leave a footprint. <laughs> True, <laughs> I should think about it <laughs> more diligently. People keep asking, uh, Sadhguru, how do I leave my footprint in this life? What's my legacy? I say, see, those who are thinking of leaving footprints will shall never fly. So don't think of footprints. I'm saying, see, the problem in the world is, yes, I'm not saying uh, women have not been subjected to so many terrible things, that's a different matter. But I'm saying, I, I don't want women to look at their life from that point of view. Absolutely. Somebody's experience of yesterday should not be the guide point of what you do today. What you need to understand is, in this world, whether you are male, female or whatever else you are, if you are... don't have the necessary power, either in terms of knowledge or skill or physical strength, depending on what type of situation it is, in some way you are powerless. Unfortunately, people push you around. Yes. Yes. It's not necessarily because you're a woman. Maybe they take little extra pleasure mm -hmm. with a woman. But they do that to anybody, male or female. So that is what we need to change, that we need a civilization. The idea of a civilization is... what civilization means is that irrespective of you're strong or weak, you get your space in the society. Well, space is limited, so there may be a little bit of jostling here and there. That's okay, that's allowed. Mm -hmm. But within the fairness of our existence, little jostling, somebody wants to be one step ahead, 
it's okay. We must allow that much, otherwise life won't happen, all right, if you make it too rigid. But if it's happening in an organized, systemic way, definitely it needs to be addressed. I feel that was happening with women especially a few years ago. But it's very important women look forward, not backward. Going on, mulling about what nonsense happened yesterday, mm -hmm. you will destroy your tomorrow. Absolutely. Today, at least by law, socially maybe not yet there fully, at least by law everybody is equal. You must use that. It's very important. Very. So, by law, every human being is equal, whether you're man, woman, black, white, this, that, your color, gender, caste, creed, everything is leveled out by law. Socially, it may still not be, but society is us. Absolutely. So, so society is not some strange entity. Not it's so. you and me who make society. How we conduct ourselves is society, isn't it? And what is normal? It's us. Whatever we do is the norm. And whatever we don't do. Uh, a woman flying is not normal, come on. Huh? <laughs> a human being should be walking. <laughs> it's, it's every human being, right? <laughs> walking. But then, how will we go to the US? How will we uh, have wings to fly? And you know, we are not living too far away from a day and era when we'll have air taxis. Oh, already, uh, you know, these flying cars are coming, and probably they're saying by 2024, yes. they will all be licensed to fly. and. Uh, especially with this drone kind of mechanism, the fourth thing. See, I fly helicopters, uh -huh. it's... Wow. You don't know that. That's amazing, no, I did not That's know. what I said, I have a rotary wing <laughs> license to fly. Wow, fantastic. Uh, not like flying your big machine, where you can close your eyes and sleep and it's still... You're allowed to sleep for forty minutes, I heard, for in four hours. Oh, well, check the airplane I'm on, uh, we have multiple crew, we have two sets of crew, so officially... No, no, but I'm saying actually when you're flying mm -hmm. in a fully automated machine like that, you're allowed to sleep for up to forty minutes, you can doze off. So, a helicopter is not like that, moment to moment you have to fly, especially I normally fly the piston engine, you know, engine mm -hmm. thing where you have to fly it moment to moment. One moment you're off means uh, you will yes. be off for good. So, but uh, any helicopter pilot knows, hmm, I wouldn't say it's hard, it's tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's tricky in terms of uh, whatever the gusts of winds when you're landing, this can happen, that can happen, small things can take your life, all right? So, Boeing ha is working on electrical vertical takeoff landing machines, which is going to be autonomous. So, is the Bell Nexus. In fact, they have. I don't it. like autonomous, I like to fly them. Come on. <laughs> no, you have a choice to fly, but they're <laughs> capable of being autonomous. So, that's the beauty of them. And I think they are the future indeed, you know. It's going to transform the world. I'm really looking forward to the era of 2020. I think it's, it's going to be a transformative era, for sure. What do you think? In terms of aviation? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think drones uh, could become the... in very many ways, the future of local transport. We're too concerned about burning gas uh, sometime in future, not now, not in your time. Later, we have to down all these big engine airplanes yes. and we must la learn to travel little slow. I made uh, small designs as to how it could be done. I presented to someone in US, they were excited but it never happened. Uh, I mean, commercially to develop like that, it'll take whatever. How? Oh, uh, out of curiosity, I'm curious. See, we can build a, a Zeppelin type of thing. Zeppelin was built with a cloth kind of sheet, ma sheet kind of thing which can collapse. Uh -huh. Today we have so many materials with right. which you can build. You can take a thousand people with full works, all right? Full service, catering, nonsense, anything you want. And uh, even a small, uh, just small engines will push it just at five thousand, six thousand feet above the ground, it will just go slowly. It'll take three days to get to United States, you have Wi-Fi, you have phones working, you have everything, you can have cubicles, you can sleep, you can have shower, you, everything is fully served, massive one goes and lands there effortlessly when you want, not on a regular airfield. It can just land in any field, if you just have fifty acres, hundred acres, it'll go and land, people can get off and go. Only thing is, you trying to get there, right now we're getting there in some fourteen hours, now people want to get there in four hours. Uh, you know, Chinese are talking about having developed an airplane in four and a half hours, Beijing to New York, they can make it. 
Mm -hmm. You can make it, but it could have lot of uh, negative effects on one's body traveling at that speed, changing timelines, time zones at that speed, it could have, or maybe we'll get used to it, because nobody ever imagined in fourteen hours we'll be in United States, all right? We may. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that kind of travel can be kept for people who need to get there in twenty-four hours. Right. Whole lot of people can enjoy the flight, it can be made all glasses, just five thousand feet above the sea level, you can enjoy the view, travel nicely, you know. It should be an option. Yeah. It should be an option, not like… Those who have time can spend less money and travel nicely. Right. Those who don't have time, they have to go fast, they can go. And preserve health in the long run. Yep, that also. That is amazing. You can have everything going there, it's a… it's like a small ship, mm -hmm. like a cruise ship. It can just cruise across, it'll get there in forty-eight hours or maybe seventy-six hours, seventy-two hours, something like that. It's like living in a tier three city and making the best of life. Yeah while still being in the real world, so something like that. I think it's a brilliant concept and future awaits it. I'm sure it's going to happen. Tell me one day we'll design it. Absolutely, let's do it <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it <laughs> But you know, it's amazing. I've been reading up a lot about the Safe Soil Movement. And uh, the Safe Soil Movement is something that connects all of us um, equally. And considering I am representing generation equality where we hold every human being equal to say. Oh, I'm glad we are equal to the ladies <laughs> I'm so glad because I thought slowly we we're being dumped. <laughs> no, no, we are equal. We are very much equal. And uh, you know, it's an interesting concept, uh, uh, sir, because uh, when we talk about equality, what we don't realize is we are the ones who are making our world unequal. When children are born into our homes, when a girl or a boy is born, we teach them to dream differently. Dreams are genderless. Dreams do not have a gender. We have to start from within us, right from the time our children are born, to tell them the dreams go dream and fulfill Why, them. why dream like that? My blessing for everybody is may your dreams not come true. Because what can you dream of? You can only dream an exaggerated version of what you already know. Mm -hmm. Can you dream of something that you don't know? Yes, say making the engine with the... Uh... No, no, you already know engines, you're thinking of different engines, all right? Yeah. So, our dreams are manufactured from what we already have, the content, the data that we have. Mm -hmm. We may make it something creative and wonderful, that's a different matter. I'm mm. not saying they're useless, mm. I'm saying a dream means it's an exaggerated version of what we know right now. Right. You jumped off a tree, mm. you were in the air for two seconds, it felt good, now you want to fly. It's just exaggeration of that same experience, uh -huh. all right? But why limit our entire life to what we already know or exaggerations of what we already know? If a human being focuses on how to be unchained in every way, not held down by anything, including your dreams. Mm. Your dreams also, see for those who are not making it, for them, dreams look like very big things. Mm -hmm. For those who have made it, dream is uh, not a big thing because it's over. So I am saying even your dream should not chain you because dream is a chain. It may be a long rope, but still it's a chain. So the most important thing is to make a human being in such a way physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically, you're unchained. If you're... if you're unhinged from all these things, we don't know what you will do. You may do something that people have never imagined possible. That's what should happen to life. That's when a human being will find absolute fulfillment, but just the way they are. No boundaries. Boundaries are set by us. Dream is also a boundary. Hmm. Your memory is a boundary, your imagination is a boundary. Memory may be with this big boundary, imagination may be that big boundary, but still a boundary, isn't it? So we must liberate ourselves truly. Yes. In order to achieve yes. greater... Only... only in that kind of freedom and liberation, all this nonsense about caste, creed, religion, gender, all this... every little thing in our life, we're making it one-one kind of boundary. 
one will cross that. Not in trying to make gender equality, mm -hmm. it's not going to work like that. In practical situations, yes, mm -hmm. but within yourself, in the way you look at life, it is not that you can sit here and say, okay, I'm equal to him or I think here, okay, she is equal to me, this is not going to help. Mm -hmm. This is okay for social situations, but you... you don't even bother what is the difference because in, a, in every way, each individual human being is unique in their own way. Absolutely. So where is the question of being equal or not equal? Both doesn't arise. In capability, in competence, in thinking, in feeling, in experiencing, are there any two human beings same? No. So then where is the question of this? So one important thing is, we do not misunderstand equality and sameness. You don't have to be like me, don't grow a beard, okay? <laughs> in trying I think I to... <laughs> look nice. I look better like this, I think. <laughs> so, uh, in trying to be equal, we are moving towards sameness. Sameness is a stupid thing. This world is beautiful only because all of us are so different, all right? Mm -hmm. Unique, literally. So, it, this equality, equality, when you talk equality, you will end up trying to make it same. Instead of talking equality, if you unchain yourself from your own stuff that you have made, your thought and emotion is manufactured by you, but it limits you. How is this? It's your product, right? Right. You can use it whichever way you want, but it should not be a chain. But right now, the very way you think and feel have become chains, isn't it? It is that which needs to go. This is why when I say, usually, uh, you know, some people are saying, I'm misogynistic, this, this, this nonsense. Simply because I said, why only women are being liberated? Every idiot Every must be liberated, person. isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> and I think this is a great take that you can take, uh, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives, we must liberate ourselves to live truly. Yep. In order to make every moment in the present count. Because until unless we don't liberate ourselves, we'll not be able to think beyond. See, this is a culture where the whole culture was invested towards one's liberation. Mukti was the only goal, you understand? You educate yourself because you want to attain mukti. You work because you want to attain mukti. You fly because you want to attain mukti. You uh, have a marriage or children or whatever else, all these are just instruments of handling the compulsions that you have so that you can attain freedom. You probably, you have not seen this, when we are growing up, our grandmothers, sitting, standing, they will talk mukti, you know, not some spiritual discourse. Always, the only focus in this country was always mukti, mukti, mukti. Mukti, moksha, all the time. But today that is gone and now we are talking about this kind of things, which will only lead to new kind of bindings. All that's happening is, I see people are getting into very strong sense of identities about themselves, they can't mix with anybody, they're inflexible, they're becoming difficult in trying to be somebody. No, the whole thing is to eliminate that because, you know, this one thing I'm talking about, soil, somebody says in United States, oh, he's a Hindu guru, we will not support him. I say, whether Hindu, Muslim, Christian, whatever you... at least when you die, you'll go back to soil if you don't understand this. Absolutely. We See, we, we are always looking at what separates you and me. We're not looking at what unifies you and me. So if... if you do not understand in a cosmic sense everything is same, if it's too far away for you, at least you understand in soil we are all one. We are essentially one, we all bleed the same. Last we all check, it's unifying or dividing, it's all within our thoughts like you said. No, we are searching for differences all the time and making identities of that. Mm -hmm. Whether it's race, religion, nationality, gender, you name it, anything you find, you use it as another means to divide further. Mm. This is because this is the nature of the intellect. If... would you like your intellect sharp or blunt? I'll bless you right now <laughs> Sharper. <Okay. laughs> sharper. <laughs> so if it's sharp or sharper, so it is a cutting instrument, you have a knife. So if you want to slice something, if you want to dissect something, knife is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But let's say now you want to stitch your clothes. If you stitch with a knife, you will be in fashion today 
Yes. <laughs> I would agree with you completely. <laughs> so, if you go on stitching with your knife, you will be in tatters in the end. Mm -hmm. This is what is happening to human societies right now. We are trying to stitch with a knife. Intellectually, don't think you and me will ever be one, never. Your mind is your mind, my mind is my mind, your body is your body, my body is my body. These things are not going to be one, you can try as hard as you want. But there is something beyond that. There is something beyond that, before, be, beyond the form that you have taken, beyond the form that you have formed with your psychological process, there is something more fundamental called life. If you don't understand that, it's not in your experience, at least you understand when we bury you, you will become part of the soil. So, I want to use the soil not only as an ecological process, mm -hmm. also as a, a conscious process of unifying humanity. Mm -hmm. This is very important right now. Absolutely. Uh, since, uh, you know, after World War II, most people believed after that, we are never again going to fight another war, because the horrors of war touch everybody's life in such a horrendous way. Everybody believed we will never fight another war. Just see, if since, since forty-four, how many wars have happened, no? Huh? How many? Almost all the time. Since two thousand, in twenty-first century, we thought there will be no wars. How many wars have happened already? This is not because people are evil. This is simply because of ignorance, of identity. I am a man, you are a woman, you are this, you… what are you? You are Punjabi, yeah? Punjabi. Oh. <laughs> I'm… <laughs> Punjabi Sindhi, half, half Sindhi, half Punjabi <laughs> So, you are Punjabi… I'm sorry, I'm saying this because all the Americans who are talking to me, they say Punjabi, I say, don't say that, huh? <laughs> that doesn't sound good <laughs> We are human beings and we are unified. No, you don't have well. to say that, this is what I'm saying, you don't have to say that. You don't have to declare I'm human being and destroy all the trees or insects or worms or whatever. The important thing is you liberate yourself from your identities that you have made for function. For functionality, you are a woman, I am a man, all right? Mm. It's a functionality. Nature has made us this way to fulfill certain functions. Absolutely. What is functional, don't make it absolute. That's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying we are all human beings, oh, we've, the amount of suffering we've caused to every other creature is untold, all right? So, do not jump from one identity to another, that's not going to help. We must understand all identities are functional tools, that's all they are. Absolutely. This being a male and that being a fe female is a functional tool of the species, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We are labor. misunderstanding this as something else altogether. And we are trying to make issues amongst us. Oh, issues will come. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have separate strong identity, mm -hmm. issues will come. Today modern societies are encouraging, you must have a strong identity. What is your identity? This is a disaster, okay? If you do this, you will see in another twenty-five to fifty years, there will be a mental pandemic as the already WHO is <laughs> talking about it. Mental illness pandemic rather. Mm -hmm. Why this will happen is, if you make your identity very strong, Somewhere within you, unknowingly, it becomes you versus the universe. This is a bad competition to get into. You're a pilot, you should never get into that competition. You fly with the forces, all right? You ever think you're flying against the forces, or you had it. That's the last day we will fly <laughs> You know, uh, every time you fly, there's a calling within you, there's a voice within you which guides you. There's a guiding force. Oh, this is dangerous. I thought you were using the instruments <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it, it always guides you. Like I still say, I, I still have that eight-year-old dreamer, uh, that Zoya inside of me who used to want to touch the stars. And she still pushes me every single day to uh, climb the greater mountain of challenges. Because in life, it's all about liberating yourself and going, doing something living every single moment to achieve greater heights and climbing the mountains of challenge. Don't go beyond forty-four thousand feet, okay? <laughs> I can't in my <laughs> plane, no. I'll, no, because you I... want to touch the stars <laughs> I'll just probably next time I'll try like this, you know, maybe I can. No, I'm that you can do here also. <laughs> the distance is not very different <laughs> 
See, this is what I'm trying to tell you, Zoya. See, your dreams have gotten you thus far, great, I'm very happy for you in every way. But there is something beyond dream. Yes. Because dream is just a romanticized thought process. Thought process happens only within the limitations of the data that you possess. But there is something called as consciousness, which is unsullied by your memory, that means it's an intelligence without limit. It is very important every human being touches that. Every human being may touch it sometime accidentally here and there, there are magic moments in everybody's life, but that's not enough. You must fire every moment. If your engine fires once in two days, you will fly. It must fire every moment, isn't mm -hmm. it? It's your engine is not even a firing, it's just a flare. Right. Mine, mine fires, dug, 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 dug. Right. No, absolutely, very well said. I think every moment is about liberating yourself from your shackles and going and doing something beyond and every moment counts. Doing or not, I'll leave it to the individual choice. Some like to do, some don't like to do, it's fine. It's not that everybody should do. Everybody may not do the amount of activity I'm doing. I am also... essentially I'm a very lazy person, I won't like to do anything. But last forty years, uh, 365 days, twenty hours a day, I'm on. Twenty or thirty hours? Twenty. Twenty? I've been asking for extra time, they never gave me, it's only... <laughs> you know? Next being, time I'll, I'll, I'll put in a word when I'm at 44 I, I've tried a lot, but <laughs> they've not given a minute extra than twenty-four hours. But I'm saying, being active like this, because the situation needs it. If I'm left to myself, I would ju I may sit just here unmoving, I have no problem with that. Mm. Because I want you to understand this is the nature of freedom. When you're free, your very existence is so beautiful, you don't have to really do anything. Doing is as per the requirement of the situation. See, the world has been destroyed the way it is because every human being has a compulsive need to act. Fortunately, fifty percent of the population is lazy. Mm. If everybody was Zoya, boom, by now, <laughs> sky would be full of traffic problems. <laughs> <laughs> no, sky would be full of air taxis and something even more futuristic. Life is all about liberating and thinking beyond. I think that's what I'm learning from my visit here today. And I... I, want... I'm, I would like to correct that. Life is definitely about liberation. Mm -hmm. But thinking beyond is not liberation. Thinking, as I said, is coming from existing data. Maybe you're taking one step more mm -hmm. from where you are, but it's not going to let you propel. This is why there is an intelligence within you and in every human being and in every creature, which is the basis of your creation. What did you have for breakfast? Um, oh, tepla. Hmm? Tepla. Tepla? Why, they didn't give you breakfast here? Oh. You carried your own tepla like you were on an airplane or something? <laughs> no, I had very nice food over here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in Erinda... Whatever, but... whatever, you eat paper like tepla, and it goes into you and within few hours it becomes like this, isn't it? So there is an intelligence within you, mm -hmm. which can transform a tepla mm. into Zoya. Should you not tap into that, I'm asking? That intelligence is not about memory, that intelligence is not about thought, it is about creation. As you are a piece of creation, you have source of creation packed into you. If you touch that, then life is not just about flying, it becomes magical in your very experience of life. Life is a magic. It's a, it's a journey and it's a magical journey. I'm looking forward to much, 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 much more magic by liberating myself and my soul right. within me. And I want to also ask you about how every single one of us, uh, save the soil is a concept that has touched myself. Can I come and paint save soil beneath your wings? Absolutely. Anytime. When are you coming? Let me know. <laughs> I'm going to take that flight right away. <laughs> are they going to allow me to do that? We should talk to the Tatars. <laughs> yes, of course we, we can. There's, um, there's always a thought to start, like you said, one point at least I can do this much. We should definitely do something about it. Tell me, you talk to somebody, I'll arrange it for being painted. If not painted, we'll just sticker it. After it's over, they can just pull it off. 
and we uh, we love to promote uh, such things which are going to help the planet. Uh, as I always say, our beautiful Mother Earth. So, I so from March 21st, 100 days, uh -huh. whenever you're flying, you talk to all the people on the plane. Mm -hmm. This is safe soil movement right below us. Right now, Sadhguru is riding a motorcycle, whatever the temperature of the day. He's, he's riding in this temperature, in these conditions. All of you stand up and say something about soil on your social media handles, wherever. Him, the citizens of the world must speak. Mm -hmm. They're all think governments are not... They're all thinking governments are not doing anything. Where have the people spoken about anything long term? They're Nobody. asking for trinkets, they're getting trinkets. It's time we express our commitment that we are concerned about tomorrow's children. We are concerned about the unborn child, because right now we're eating up the unborn child's food. Absolutely. That's what we're doing. Yes. So, human beings must express, we're all democratic nations. People have not spoken, so the government is doing what they can do. Yes. We must speak. One hundred days, we want to get at least sixty percent of the world's electorate, which adds up to three point five to four billion people, to speak. This is the first time where there is instruments through which you can speak to the world. Everybody say something about soil. If you don't know anything, say, save soil, let's make it happen <laughs> <laughs> But I think every single human being, uh, besides just spreading awareness, people who don't have the social outreach, how can they contribute to save the soil? Because according to me, every single human being, every single person is equal. As we are talking about generation equality, we're still equal. How does everybody go on from here who does not have a social media outreach? How do they do So, it? see, today in the world, over 5.7 or 5.8 billion people have a phone in their hand, all right? Or even otherwise, they're meeting 10, 20 people a day. Do it at your scale, it's okay. You meet only 10 people a day, do that. If you may, if you're reaching million people a day, do that, whichever way it is. The important thing is, only if all of us act, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because right now, enshrining it in the policy, of every nation is most important. Because see, right now we're keeping this land very well. There's a whole lot of demand. Every other day, they think I forgot about it. Every two years, they will come back and say, Sadhguru, shall we pave this road, Sadhguru? Yesterday, one child fell down, you know, it happened. Shall we put concrete? I said, no concrete. Rain falls, it must go down. It's not concrete and ch child should learn to walk on uneven surfaces. Otherwise, he'll become an old man by the time he's twelve. So, I make sure even if it's paved, it's uneven, always. There's today a lot of research, we've been doing this always. Today there's lots of research to say that your neurological development and stimulation of the brain is so much better if you're walking on uneven surfaces. If you're always walking on flat surfaces, you become flat in your head <laughs> okay? So there is research saying this, but unfortunately everything has to be researched. Why can't you feel it, what it is doing to you? If you walk, you will know what it does to you. Absolutely. So, this is like this, for small conveniences, we're destroying large things. Right now, the only problem that's there on the planet is in terms of soil, it's either plowed or paved. Some things we cannot avoid, we have to do it. But wherever we can avoid, we must avoid not only that, regenerating the soil is in the hands of the farmer. You cannot go and do it, you're either a pilot, or a doctor or an engineer cannot do this. The only thing that you can do, you're living in urban such, such, uh, situations is, you can raise your voice and make it reach. Because governments will always respond to the people. Because in democracy, the only currency is numbers, there's nothing else. Right. So you create those numbers. How to get the policy done, we will do already eleven countries. Yesterday I spoke to the CARICOM, uh, you know, the Caribbean uh, organization. Eleven countries are on board, they're signing the soil agreement with us, okay? Wonderful. So, before I start the rally, I already have eleven. All others beginning to address this. In United States, they allotted a billion dollars to put cover crops during summer or winter, depending on what situation it is. So, these are all positive steps already right. governments beginning to take. Right. Till about four or five months ago, nobody uttered a word on soil, believe me. Uh, I was recently in Italy and Lithuania, a few countries in Europe. Maybe I can get them on board, uh, if if you permit. I can put yeah, them. Yeah, I'm going to those countries. I'm going to Lithuania and Italy. Wonderful. 
So uh, that'll be wonderful if something can be worked out with their government. So maximum Indian. number of people, say something, if you don't know anything else, when you finish your call for those hundred days, you say safe soil, you send a message, you say safe soil. This needs to happen because yes. we have a way of aggregating all these numbers and showing to every government in the world that mm -hmm. this many people want it, are you going to ignore it? Mm -hmm. Nobody will ignore it, believe me. Already they're responding very well, but what I feel is, instead of blaming the governments, people have never spoken. They're asking for small things, get, they're getting small things. This is a generational responsibility and we have this, soil is not our property. It's come to us, we must pass it on in a living condition, that's the most important thing. Only thing we have is this moment, nothing belongs to us, but whatever we have, we must preserve it and leave behind for our better tomorrow and our children, like you said. So we'll definitely looking forward to working on it. And last very, very simple question I'm going to ask you, happiness or peace, <laughs> what do you think we should choose? For my, all my uh, followers and all my viewers, <laughs> happiness or peace, what should we go after? <laughs> if you uh, see, if you are given up on an ecstatic way of existence, then you can fall down to blissful way. If you have given up on that hope, you can fall, fall down to joyful way. Mm -hmm. If you have given up on joy, you can come down to happiness. If you have given up on that also, you can come down to peace or you can rest in peace. I don't think I've given up on anything <laughs> on that note. <laughs> Life is so short and we have so much to do. Such an amazing journey. It was such an honor to interact with you and I look forward to flying you, Sadhguruji. I'll and fly with you someday. Yes. But uh, if you… Uh, we're creating what's called as Earth Buddies, who mm -hmm. dedicate five to ten minutes of their day, for these hundred days, from March twenty-first, one hundred days when I'm riding through, they spend five, ten minutes enhancing the message. If you have social media presence, yes. do it. If you don't have, we are uh, putting out toolkits as to how to start a social media account for those who do not know, or if you are unable to do all that, just talk to five people a day. I make it my promise for those hundred days on my social media platform, I will make it happen every if single you, day. If you get me one million earth buddies, you will get to ride with me for hundred kilometers <laughs> on my motorcycle. Ten kilometers? Okay. <laughs> no, ten kilometers how many? <laughs> to start with. <laughs> <laughs> you are <laughs> negotiating with me. <laughs> and I'm a Punjabi. One million and mm -hmm. you will get to ride with me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank All you. the best for you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir.